Hundreds of thousands try to make this journey every summer, from unstable countries in Africa and the Middle East to Europe, and the promise of a better life. Before uh, Syria was uh, very good, uh, but after uh, uh, you know the war, uh, everything changed. Everything is bad. Majid, not his real name, is a 30-year-old maths teacher from Syria, now living in Leeds. We're not showing his full face because he still has close family back home. A lot of night we was sleeping and uh, uh, suddenly too much bomba around us. Too much bomba and, and we listen uh, the sound when, when she coming, the air, after that. I don't want uh, fighting, I don't want to kill anybody. I think I don't have to choose, I want to go in, uh, in Europe. That journey began in Majid's home in Dara in southern Syria, the city which kick-started the uprising against the government of Bashar al-Assad. Leaving his wife and young family with his parents, he crossed into Lebanon. He made his way south and west through Egypt to Libya. There in fishing villages along the coast are small boats, boats used by people smugglers to ship thousands across the Mediterranean every week. We go uh, at the night. 400, about 415 persons in the, this port. This port uh, uh, long uh, 12, uh, 12 meters only. And uh, when I see this, I, I, I want to die now. I, I don't want. I, I, I say for him, please uh, release me. I don't want. You take your, uh, my money. I don't want, but it's very dangerous. He look at me very nervous, and he tell me, I kill you now. And I put you under the ground if you don't want uh, to go. This stretch of water is now the most deadly in the world. These migrants were saved when their boat capsized, but more than 1,500 are now feared to have died this year alone. As the weather and sea conditions improve, the Italian authorities say the situation will almost certainly get worse. Like many, Majid's boat broke down or ran out of fuel in the middle of the journey. It took another 36 hours until he was picked up by the Italian Coast Guard. I see the people, all the people cry. The man, the children. Well, I, I, I remember when uh, he cried too much. The uh, same, same water, uh, his face. Because uh, he, he cried about uh, his family. Why, why I bring my family? Tell me how you felt when you saw that boat come to rescue you. I, I, I can't uh, explain for you what I feel. Everybody cry and, and um, say thank you for the God, for thank you, because uh, we, we upset so much. And I think about my family, why, why, why I make this? Majid was taken to the mainland and released from detention. He traveled through Milan, Paris, and then Calais. After a week there, he smuggled himself onto a truck, taking this picture as he crossed the channel to Dover. When, uh, when I come from Libya, I, I think about, I want to go to England. It's, uh, it's the best for me. It's the uh, best choice for me. Well, why? why? I, I tell you why. Uh, the second language in Syria is English. We, we, we learn in Syria uh, English. And another uh, reason for work, we want to work. We want to, in England, maybe you can work. Uh, it's easy to work. After a few months in the UK, Majid was granted asylum and brought his young family over legally from Syria through Lebanon. He took a job in London before moving to Leeds, where he's now learning English at college. Was it all worth it, looking back? Was it worth what you've done to be where you are now? Yes, it's a, it's a good decision because I come here. Uh, not for me, it's very important I tell you for kids. 
because no teaching, no, no healthy now in Syria, no hospital, no doctors. Every day die, every day bombs, every day fighting, crazy war. Syria was to 22 million uh, persons, now 10 million only in Syria. The problem for the authorities is no matter what restrictions and controls are put in place, those basic facts will not change. The pull of Western Europe as a safe haven or place to start a new, better life seems to be as strong as ever.